I believe slavery is wrong. It is not right to control lives of others, the choices of others, or to take away their freedoms. It is not right to use others for your personal gain and to not give them the option to refuse work. How can one person decide that the value of one human life is greater than another? Please allow me to share with you a letter from a friend and former slave, Jamal. I was taken prisoner while I was fighting against the European invasion that threatened my tribe, Ashanti. The other members of my tribe were either killed or taken prisoner, just like I was. After a season's hike to the shoreline of Africa, I was boarded onto a ship named the Amistad in 1830. Life on the Amistad made up the most brutal days of my life. It was a struggle to survive from one day to the next with disease and starvation always nearby. After the voyage from Africa, I was taken to a slave camp on the south coast of Texas. Here I was assigned to the brutal duties of being a field hand slave. I worked in the burning sun in the fields of cotton until the sun had set each night. This was very hard work, and there was no refusing it, unless you wanted to be whipped to death. At night time, I had a small chance to eat and rest for another day's work. Meals were always meat, bread, and potatoes. Just the basics to keep us alive for another day of work. I didn't sleep much. Instead, I would usually go down by the campfire and dance with the other slaves while we listened to freedom songs and dreamed of escaping our hardships. Freedom songs were real special. You know why? They contained special instructions on how to escape to a life of freedom, should you have the courage to take the risk. Now, what we wear on our backs as we work in the fields is not what we ask for. Whatever you were wearing when you were first captured were the clothes for the remainder of your lifetime. Unless you escaped, of course. To us slaves, our clothing was never a major concern. What concerned us the most was how we were treated. We were treated very roughly because of our skin color. But we had to do everything that our owner said. Unless we wanted to be whipped or tortured in other very cruel ways until we either died decided to do what they said. It was always easier to do what they said, but each time you did, you lost a little bit more of yourself. Every once in a while, the field hands got to work as house slaves instead of staying in the cotton fields. To most field hands, like me, who had the privilege to work indoors as house slaves, we found the move from field to house the best thing that happened since our capture. Working in the hot fields was very tiring, and housework was just a little bit easier on me. After the many brutal years of slavery and racism, President Abraham Lincoln wrote the Emancipation Proclamation on the 22nd day of September in 1862. When he wrote this, he promised that it would take issue on the first day of January in 1863. Us slaves have been waiting a long time for this. Although I was already 54 when it came to be, this was the happiest day of my life. This action put an end to the Civil War and freed all of the slaves in the United States, making slavery and the ownership of another's life illegal. Slavery and racism is now against the law. Times have changed. All of us, as citizens of the world, must stand up for what we believe is right. If we keep silent out of fear, if we turn away from speaking up, when we see bad things happening, we almost give our permission. It is up to all of us. One person can make a difference. We need to keep a strong attitude that respects all people 
no matter what color their skin is, no matter what their religious beliefs, no matter what their language or background. We must always be prepared to act. Action brings about change. Change makes a better world. Be part of that.